Iowa, Iowa State is this week, and it's a great rivalry. It's a little complicated. We'll have all the details right here on Locked On Big Ten. You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We really appreciate having you here with us. And, of course, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. It's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for $20 off your first purchase. The Cyhawk Trophy is going to be awarded this weekend. Plus, we'll have Harbaugh's reaction to Dion and Big Ten Classics. Of course, be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcasts. That way, You'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. All right. 14 Big Ten games this weekend. Everybody playing out of conference. Great rivalry. The Iowa Hawkeyes travel into Iowa State to face the Cyclones at Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa. Both teams are 1-0 and looking for a little momentum to continue in the beginning of this season. As one of college football's oldest rivalries, in fact, this will be the 70th meeting between the two schools. It goes back to 1894. They played every year with the exception of 2020 since 1977, and Iowa leads the series 46-23. to Look, we all admit it's not Michigan, Ohio State, or Notre Dame, or Southern Cal, or Texas and Oklahoma, but it's pretty big. It's so big that uh, given the importance of the state of Iowa, Former President Donald Trump will be at the game. That's right. After all, the Iowa caucuses are in January. But the Cyclones won last year 10-7, to breaking a six-game Hawkeyes winning streak. A little side note here to you Hawkeye fans that uh, always tune into this podcast. Um, yeah, you're not going to be surprised to remember that the score was 10-7. It seemed like all your games were 10-7 last year. I know it felt like that for sure. Neither team is ranked in the top 25, although the Hawkeyes were ranked 25th last week. They won, and yet they fell out of the top 25. Go figure. There are some complications with both teams going into this game. You know, both have been caught up in this statewide sports gambling investigation that's been going on in the state of Iowa. Both teams have had players investigated and some suspended. In fact, six players from Iowa State and five players from Iowa have either been uh, tossed or suspended for sports gambling. By the way, I was favored by three. I, was that inappropriate? I, just the facts. I'm just giving you the line. That's all. Let's start with Iowa State in this one. Uh, quarterback Rocco Beck is who you're going to be watching on this game. He's a former four-star recruit, only saw three games of action last year. He's been thrust into the starting role because former quarterback Hunter Decker was involved in this gambling scandal. And so now Beck will be the quarterback for this game. And Cyclone linebacker Caleb Bacon had two sacks and two tackles for loss in Saturday's game versus Northern Iowa. You will see him quite a bit as well in this football game. On to the Iowa Hawkeyes. You know, we talk a lot of Hawkeyes on this podcast. You guys are great, by the way. Uh, always uh, checking it out. Uh, Iowa's coming off a 24-14 win over Utah State in the opener. And you know, as well as I do, that they need to score 25 a game for Brian Ferentz to keep his job. So 24, I keep bringing that up right there. I'm going to be really interested in this score for this game as well. You know, the problem or the interesting side story, if you will, with Iowa is Cade McNamara. He's taken so few snaps with this team in spring ball and, and in the summer here in August because of a couple of, you know, back, back in the spring, he was recovering from a knee surgery. Now he gets uh, injured almost, almost right at the very beginning of the August camp with a quad injury and basically missed the whole set of practice. There was even a question as to whether he was going to play last weekend. To his credit, he did. But I thought, and I watched this game as you did, um, I thought he was cautious and conservative in order to protect himself out there. 
And that uh, that quad injury, it also seems that he, he can't dive into the line if they have a, a fourth and short situation or a goal line situation. Like last week on fourth and one, they handed off to uh, LaShawn Williams and he got stopped. It's, it's like a, a, a whole section of the playbook is not available. I think McNamara can't roll out, can't really run the bootleg and scramble. Um, he's still the best choice at quarterback, I presume, for this team, but it's a tremendous help to the defense when they know that that quarterback can't do X, Y, Z, and they can concentrate on ABC throughout the entire game. But there's a bright spot. It was great to see him out there and on his very first pass as an Iowa Hawkeye throw a touchdown. That was that was pretty cool. I bet a lot of people got excited about that. But the offense did get bogged down uh, after a while in this game. And even in the third quarter, McNamara, I think he threw six straight incomplete passes. He retweaked the quad injury, it appeared. And I, I think that's going to be tough. I was, I mentioned this in an earlier podcast this week. I was very concerned when Kirk Ferentz said, look, this is going to be an injury we're going to have to manage throughout the year. It's not going to go away. It's not going to get better. That can't be good, right? So that is something to continuously keep an eye on and whether he starts limping again and anytime he gets uh, hit. And again, there's going to be some situations where you need a quarterback to be mobile or have some options. And if he can't run or drive because the, the quad is uh, is not strong, could be a problem. On a defensive side for the Hawkeyes, uh, cornerback Cooper DeGene, he's got to be chomping at the bit for this game because he knows he's going against an inexperienced quarterback on the other side. And you'll remember DeGene had a single-season Hawkeyes uh, record, three pick sixes last year, made seven tackles in the game last week against Utah State. So uh, he's looking forward to it as well. You know, Ferentz has been part of this Cyhawk series for a long time, but the rivalry seems to have stepped up a little bit in intensity uh, since the arrival of Cyclones head coach Matt Campbell. And he finally won one last year, of course. But I, I think this game is still going to be a little bit on the low scoring side. But I, you know, I think it'll be a hard hitting grudge match. But I stand by the fact that this is one of the the best rivalries in all of football. And you guys in Iowa know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, hopefully the rest of the country will too. So, uh, but you know, for Brian Ferentz's um, case, I, I hope it's, I hope it's not too low scoring. I hope he can get up there and get over 25 points, but look, if it turns out to be a punt fest, I don't know if this is selling it or not, but if it's a punt fest, there's two excellent punters on both sides. If, if you like punting, maybe, maybe this will happen. Um, I say that tongue in cheek, but they do have some good punters on both sides. Iowa punter Tory Taylor back in the 2021 game, he had eight punts for an average of 51 yards and landed five inside the 20, three inside the 10. As far as Cyclones punter, uh, Tyler uh, Perkins, he averaged almost 54 yards on eight punts last week and had a 70 yarder against Northern Iowa. But I started this trying to hype up this rivalry for you and talking about punters is not going to do it. I'm just going to, I'm just throwing that element in there in case it becomes a low scoring battle of field position. And again, Hawkeye fans, you know, all about that. So but hopefully it'll be a little more exciting. It's still a great, it doesn't take away from the rivalry. It's a bunch of smash mouth football, whether it's low scoring or not, it's a, it's a great rivalry. And um, sad note is this rivalry may not go on forever. Both teams are contracted to play through 2027, but both teams play in leagues that are expanding, the Big Ten and the Big 12. I mean, let's be real. And scheduling may get a little challenging. So we'll see. This game will air Saturday on Fox at 3.30. Love your comments on this, uh, on this particular rivalry, uh, or anything else you want to talk about. Hit us up on, on Twitter at Talk Big Ten, or any comments here on YouTube as well. Uh, there are other things going on in the Big Ten in addition to this rivalry and, of course, Coach Prime taking on the Huskers in Colorado. We're going to take a little look into uh, week two. Oh, and what Jim Harbaugh had to say about Coach Prime as well. Remember, Jim Harbaugh was at home watching these games, <laughs> his own game, and uh, also uh, Dion in Colorado and all that. So we got all that coming up right here on Lockdown Big Ten. Well, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. you got to get the right 
people in there, you know, like like Dion, for example, over at Colorado. He got a whole new team, 87 new players through the portal or freshmen. Unreal. That's a lot of new employees, right? Got to get them right. And you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available when you're looking to fill jobs in your office. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. You get your job posted out there, get the process rolling. And then with your uh, job, um, you get the purple hashtag hiring frame. With your LinkedIn profile, it helps you spread the word that you're hiring. That's the first part. Get the word out. You are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and eventually hire because that's the name of the game. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. So um, let's get into it a little bit. Uh, like I said earlier, Jim Harbaugh was sitting at home and watching the game. Well, he wasn't at his home. Uh, I'll tell you where he was exactly when he was watching the game against East Carolina, riding out his suspension. We'll get into that in just a moment. But he did talk about Deion Sanders. He did notice the Colorado TCU game. And, of course, Michigan has a history last year with TCU. Um, but the Buffaloes got the big upset. And Harbaugh said, hey, man, that was quite a performance. And he also loved Prime's halftime interview, as did I, by the way. I thought it was one of the greatest lines ever where he mentioned his son, who was the quarterback. He said, uh, if we'd hit two more passes, the Heisman would be chilling at the crib. Oh, that was one of the greatest lines I've ever heard covering sports in many, many decades. Uh, Harbaugh went on to suggest that maybe the Coach of the Year award might be chilling at Dion's crib sometime if he keeps uh, coaching and winning like this. Uh, if you did miss all the excitement of the Colorado event and uh, the win over TCU, uh, Big Ten fans, again, you get your chance this weekend as Coach Prime takes on Matt Rule and the Nebraska Cornhuskers on Saturday afternoon. In case you were wondering, and I did allude to it a moment ago, uh, Harbaugh and offensive coordinator Sheryl Moore were both suspended. Moore got one game, Harbaugh three. Harbaugh watched the game, the East Carolina game, at Moore's at Moore's crib, his house. And uh, so they decided to watch it together. One other story about Harbaugh, and this is according to USA Today's Danny Sheridan. He is reporting that his sources tell him Jim Harbaugh is 100% leaving Michigan after the season if, if he gets an NFL offer. Well, I, Craig Schumann, are reporting that grass is green, the sky is blue, and puppies are cute. I mean, get to me when you get some real breaking news. I mean, that's the mindset. Yeah. I, if the NFL calls, call, uh, 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 starts calling Harbaugh, he's going to be interested. No question. And probably getting tired of this, uh, this uh, suspension stuff as well. You know, over uh, the weekend, I was checking out an article that I thought was interesting. I pose it to you. We'll get into it later. Maybe we'll do a podcast on it entirely later on. But the premise of it was how all these teams coming into the Big Ten from the Pac-12 might really, really change the Big Ten. And I thought it was pretty interesting. At least change, them, uh, change the Big Ten offensively. Look, the Big Ten has come a long way since its old reputable days is three yards and a cloud of dust, right? But it's still known as a pretty powerful smash-you-in-the-face league. I mean, just look at last weekend's Nebraska-Minnesota game, 13-10, right? Or you can look at Iowa any of the past two years, right? We just made that case again. Now go look at the Pac-12. It could be argued that the Pac-12, standing on its last leg in its last year of existence, could be its greatest year of all time. They've got ranked teams. They're good. Just look at the quarterbacks alone and how they air it out and how exciting they are. You got Heisman winner Caleb Williams at USC. 
You got Michael Penix Jr., formerly of Indiana, now at Washington. You got Bo Nix. You got Cam Rising. Shador Sanders has to be in the conversation now. And DJ Ugalele. And they're incredible. This is the deepest the Pac-12 has been with great quarterback play. And when these guys come out for the NFL draft, we're going to be loaded, absolutely loaded with the quarterbacks in the, in the early rounds of the NFL draft. So it, my question is, if these West Coast teams keep slinging it like this, and then a bunch of these teams come on over to the Big Ten, are they going to force the current Big Ten to, to change its offensive style? I'm just asking the question. I would like your reaction on it. We will do a podcast on this at some future date when things slow down. Right now, we're in the middle of it, week two, getting ready to go. But I thought it was some good food for thought, like you'd hit me up at Talk Big Ten or here on YouTube with your commentary. Certainly would uh, love to discuss that. Meanwhile, I would like to share with you some awards that came out this week with the Big Ten. Uh, Offensive Player of the Week goes to Penn State quarterback Drew Aller. It's the first time he's won it. The performance against West Virginia. And as you know, we spent a lot of time on this podcast discussing it as well and uh, how impressed we were. And he just he just looks great. Not only did he do great, he looks the part. And he settled right in. The last time Penn State won this award, Sean Clifford got it last year in October. We have co-defensive players of the week in the Big Ten. First of all, defensive back Mike Scott from Illinois. Had a 48-yard pick six in that game in the third quarter against Toledo. If he doesn't make that play, they don't win that game. He also threw in six tackles. So he uh, he had a big game. Also, Tyler Newbin from Minnesota. He had a big game as well against Nebraska. And he had two interceptions. And the Gophers got their fifth straight win against Nebraska. That second interception he got late in the game, less than a minute to go. And then they end up kicking the... Game-winning field goal, 13 to 10. So Tyler Newman, fantastic job for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Special teams player of the week, Minnesota. Kicker Dragon Kasich hit two or three field goals, including that game winner, the 47-yarder at the horn. Pressure pack kick, nailed it. And freshman of the week goes to Purdue defensive back Dylan Theeneman. He's a true freshman, had a team-high 10 tackles against Fresno State in a great ball game, all solo tackles. And also had his first career interception in the fourth quarter. It was a it was a nice play. Running over to the sideline, got it, and it led to a Boilers touchdown that gave them the lead, which they then lost the lead and ended up losing the game. But he's the third uh, Purdue true freshman since 1996 to pick off a pass in their debut. Certainly worthy of mentioning that. So. Uh, that's, uh, that's what took place with the awards around the Big Ten that they give out each and every week. Uh, before we get to the Big Ten Classics, I want to thank each and every one of you for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen every day. And since we're into the college football season, I want to tell you about a new program that is out that we're all very excited about. It's Lockdown College Football Kickoff Live. It's every Friday. And it airs on all the Lockdown College stations or uh, yeah, channels here on YouTube, including this one, Lockdown Big Ten. And it airs live at 11 a.m. to, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 11 a.m. Eastern to 1 p.m. It's a two-hour deal um, on every Lockdown channel, but you can catch it right here, Lockdown Big Ten. I will be participating as well. Uh, always uh, spend a few minutes with the guys, give them my insight to what's going on in the Big Ten that I share with you each and every week. And then they edit it down to about an hour and do the audio-only version. So if you listen to audio podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, it'll be there, available also on on my channel here. So uh, it's worth a listen or a view. And again, it's called the uh, Lockdown College Football Kickoff Live Show every single Friday. You don't want to miss it. In the meantime, uh, I want to ask you to subscribe. Picked up a couple hundred more subscribers today. Thank you. Uh, keep it coming. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm asking you to, and uh, you'll be doing me a great favor. And that gets you in our club, man, for free. It's free. Just click it on. You're good to go. Make sure you get these podcasts as soon as they become available each and every day. Also, however you get the podcast, share, follow, and like Lockdown Big Ten, if you will. I would really, really appreciate it. All right. uh, Our Big Ten Classics coming up next. Stay with us right here on Lockdown Big Ten. All right. Uh, Let me tell you about game time. I like this a lot. 
if you're going to a game this weekend, perhaps a big 10 game, one of the 14 big 10 games, somebody's got to get the tickets, right? That can be a little stressful sometimes, especially if you wait to the last second, maybe, maybe right now you're thinking about going to a game on Saturday and you're like, wow, Saturday, ah, no problem. Just check out game time. They got a great app. Uh, the game time app game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. And my favorite game time feature is that you can click it on and, and it'll show you an actual view of the ticket of that seat. And you'll know ahead of time what your view is. Are you gonna, can you, is there any obstruction? No, no, you, nothing there. Perfect view of the end zone, the 50 yard line, whatever you want. Um, just download the game time app today. You create an account. You use the code lockdown college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. And again, uh, create the account and re uh, redeem the code locked on college, get $20 off. So download game time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. As you know, we do the uh, big 10 networks, big 10 classics going into the weekend, uh, every weekend and um, more lately. And now we got, we've got games too. So I'm going to explain what they're doing and what we're doing as well. We'll take a look at all that. I'm going to put it on screen here so we can check it out. Uh, we always do the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, college football, Indiana State at Indiana. Interesting on that. You know, Tom Allen was very adamant. Again, he gets asked about this every time the Hoosiers have a Friday game because he, Friday is for high school football. And he doesn't like it when college football plays on Friday. That should be That should be sacred. Left alone for high school football. I admire the stance, but you got to play money. Money talks. It's a TV game. Indiana's playing, hosting Indiana State. Tom Allen also has to decide who his quarterback is going to be. Uh, the Ohio State game last weekend, Brendan Soresby started, and then Taven Jackson came in. Neither were really that effective. He's flipping the script this week. Taven Jackson will start the game, and Brendan Soresby will play. But they got to decide who's going to be quarterback. They have pretty good defense, uh, they, but they need to figure out this quarterback situation. Also, sidebar. On Indiana State, Kurt Mallory is their head coach. Now, you may remember that name if you're a Big Ten fan. Kurt Mallory used to play for the Michigan Wolverines along with his brothers, and their dad was Bill Mallory, who was the head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers when I was a student there back in the day. They were pretty good. So that's got to be nice for Kurt Mallory to be coming back where his dad, his late father, uh, used to coach in Bloomington. Saturday, September 9th at 10 a.m. Eastern time is Big Ten tailgate. It is from East Lansing, Michigan State this particular week. And then they're going to go into their broadcast, a live broadcast of Youngstown State versus Ohio State at 12 noon. I call this the Jim Trestle Bowl since he was uh, a very important person at both institutions during his career. Ryan Day here, by the way, Kyle McCord, and Devin Brown are going to play just like last week, although Devin Brown didn't play that much in the Indiana game. He's going to play a lot more in this one. This quarterback situation in Ohio State is not settled. Okay, I know they named McCord the starter a couple days before the Indiana game. This is not done. They, they are still battling it out. At 3.30, since they were doing the Big Ten tailgate show at East Lansing, they'll carry the Richmond at Michigan State game. And, of course, Mel Tucker and Noah Kim coming off that 31-7 win over Central Michigan. And then at 7.30, Eastern Michigan is at Minnesota. And uh, P.J. Fleck having nine days to prepare for this game because they had the Thursday night game against Nebraska in that win. they got to find some more offense. Maybe they can open it up a little bit more against Eastern Michigan. They only got 13 points last week with eighth in Kaliak Manis at quarterback, and they got to improve there. Now, Sunday – uh, they usually do the Big Ten football in 60, whether they want to call them classics or whatever. They'll edit up the games play-by-play, -play, condense it into snap-by-snap, -snap, condense it into 60 minutes. Well, right now, as the taping of this podcast, the grid is all TBA. And I think it's because they've got all these uh, uh, Big Ten teams playing out of conference, and some of the teams aren't very good, and they're trying to figure out where they're going to put each of the games when all is said and done. So they haven't, they haven't put up the schedule yet. I got to imagine Iowa, Iowa state will be uh front and center at one of this. I'm sure Colorado and Nebraska will be on one of these time slots as well. They just need to figure out what they're going to do. So that's where the big 10 network is at with all the classics going into this weekend. I'll be watching as well. 
Uh, I want to thank all of you for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen each and every day. And our everydayers, we really appreciate you guys. Our next show is going to get you ready for the weekend. Week two, probably a lot more. Dion versus Nebraska. Always love talking about that. That's some fun. In the meantime, hit us up on Twitter at TalkBig10. Um, don't forget uh, TalkBig10.com with the number 10 is our new website. Also, be sure to subscribe and follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app, and you get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it becomes available each and every day. Now I'm going to invite you to check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast for the latest on everything else going on in sports. Have yourself a wonderful day. Talk to you next time. I can't wait. I'm Craig Schumann for Lockdown Big Ten.